Today I wanted to discuss one of the strangest exoplanets discovered in the last few years. Actually in this case, not just the exoplanet, but in some sense the entire star system. The system that you see right here known as WD1856-534. A system that potentially created a planet entirely out of leftovers from some kind of a destroyed or potentially swallowed star. And a planet that now seems to be located in the habitable zone of the star system. And so here there's actually quite a lot to unpack. And so I guess let's start with the basics. Hello info person, this is Anton. Let's talk about the discovery of this unusual white dwarf, the planet orbiting around it in the habitable zone, and how this bizarre system was potentially created. And technically this planet was discovered back in 2020. I think there might be even an older video about this, there should be somewhere in the description, mostly because the planet in this case was so strange. Here we clearly had an unusual white dwarf in a triple star system that actually contained a couple of red dwarf stars as well, but the white dwarf that was a little bit colder. Based on the spectrum you see right here, it was about 4400 Celsius, 8000 Fahrenheit. And that suggested that this white dwarf was pretty old, maybe about 5.8 billion years old in total. It was also approximately half as massive as our Sun, but was either the same size or maybe just a little bit larger than planet Earth in terms of radius. And just like a lot of other unusual white dwarfs, usually the ones involving some kind of a disk or unusual elements on the surface, in case of this white dwarf, it appeared to have something in its orbit at a relatively close distance. It was about 0.02 astronomical units away from the center, roughly in the orbit you see right here. And that something could only be some kind of a planet. Possibly same size as Jupiter, but very likely not a brown dwarf. With a mass of about 1 to maybe 12 masses of Jupiter in total, and a single orbit of 1.4 days. And so essentially here, every 1.4 days, something was pulling on this white dwarf, suggesting a relatively massive object. But I guess more excitingly was the actual location for this planet. White dwarfs, unlike typical stars, obviously don't produce as much heat, and so their habitable zone is also much, much closer. And it just so happens that this particular planet was literally right in the middle of it. Implying that this planet, if it maybe had some moons or something, those moons could be habitable as well. Making this planet super exciting for a lot of scientists. But it was still a gas giant and there were obviously no signs of moons whatsoever. As a matter of fact, the initial observations of what this planet might look like potentially even suggested some kind of a featureless grey world, very likely entirely covered in hazes. And so basically this was just a strange planet. And so many different scientists wanted to figure out where exactly did it come from. Mostly because a typical planet should not form so close to a white dwarf, even if this white dwarf had a really large disk around it. As a matter of fact, any planet in this location should have been already shredded apart a long time ago. Yet it was clearly not destroyed, and it was clearly here. And so the first suggestion from back in 2020 was some kind of a planetary migration. This was possibly a planet much farther away, and eventually made its way closer and closer, possibly because of the gravitational pull from the nearby red dwarfs. This is a triple star system, and so the white dwarf here has at least two partners. But a much more interesting explanation, and possibly a more likely explanation, was just explained in a recent study you can find in the description. And here the assumption is really simple. We know that the majority of systems out there seem to be binary, just like the binary partners of this particular star. And we know that many white dwarfs do actually form in binary systems, where sometimes there is another larger star in their orbit. And so here there's actually a possibility that back in the days, over 6 billion years ago, this was just two regular stars. One possibly similar to the Sun, and one maybe a little bit smaller. Some kind of a red dwarf once again. And eventually, just like so many other stars, that Sun-like star started to become a red giant and basically enveloped its partner. It actually formed a really cool phenomenon referred to as common envelope. And so here the smaller red dwarf literally entered the larger star and started to orbit inside of it, inside that common envelope. And we actually know these stars exist and do produce very specific observations, but in many cases they also produce some really extreme binaries, such as sometimes neutron stars, black holes, and so on. And so in essence what we have here is a core of a larger star, which is going to become a white dwarf, orbiting a smaller red dwarf literally inside of itself. And modern explanations propose one of two potential resolutions. 
either a merger that results in a novel-like explosion, such as the famous V838 Monocerotis you see right here, the videos in the description talk about this a little bit more, or the envelope disappears and dissipates, and we actually end up with some kind of an unusual binary, very often some kind of a neutron star and some kind of a smaller star, or possibly some other binary object in a very tight orbit. Now these have been actually found pretty much everywhere, but up until this point we've never actually seen anything like what we're essentially seeing right here. And so in this case, in this star system, several mathematical models were successful in reproducing an extremely similar star system. A system of a really really unusual planet orbiting a white dwarf super close. But in this case a system that involved a potential destruction of a smaller star inside of that common envelope. And so here the smaller star, once it entered the common envelope, it might have been completely disrupted tidally, which essentially destroyed the star, producing a relatively massive accretion disk somewhere in the center. In other words, here we essentially have some kind of a third scenario. Instead of a binary system and instead of a collision, we now have a central core, an accretion disk and that common envelope. According to that model, this could only happen if the smaller star was just the right size, entering the common envelope of a sun-like star. Here the smaller star had to be approximately 15% the mass of the sun. And within just a few orbits, that smaller star would start to be tidally disrupted, basically in some sense being completely destroyed inside the larger object. But destroyed in such a way that it now left behind an accretion disk that was now left behind orbiting the core and that was still inside of that common envelope. But eventually the envelope disappeared, yet the accretion disk was left behind. But it was no longer as massive and contained just enough mass to produce that one Jupiter-like planet, which eventually formed in the orbit that we see right now. And so in that sense what we're seeing is basically a second generation planet, but in this case also produced entirely out of another star. A star destroyed by tidal disruption and the star that was inside the common envelope which basically suggests that this planet was literally produced inside another star. And if correct, this would be really unusual, very peculiar, but would also explain why this particular planet and its spectrum right now seems to be kind of bizarre. As mentioned before, this planet seems to be kind of hazy, does not seem to contain a lot of spectra that are very easily visible, and overall appears to be different from anything else. And I guess more importantly, once again, it is in the official habitable zone around this bizarre white dwarf. Although I guess technically it's a yellow dwarf because it's actually much colder and does appear yellow from a distance. But more excitingly, because this white dwarf is going to maintain this temperature for a very long time, technically this planet is going to be in this habitable zone in very constant conditions for possibly several billion years. And so here discovering any kind of a habitable moon if it is possible, would actually be super exciting. But right now we don't even know much about this planet, as no additional observations have been conducted yet. As a matter of fact, analyzing its spectrum can prove to us that it actually did come from a star formed as a result of a tidal disruption. So measuring elemental composition of this planet and this white dwarf would definitely be the next important step. But obviously this is just a hypothesis, and right now nobody is really certain how this planet was formed, why it seems to be in this unusual location or unusual orbit around this white dwarf, and there are obviously still a lot of unanswered questions about what's going on on its surface. But hopefully in some of the future observations from other telescopes, scientists will get additional data to be able to answer some of this. Right now it's still a big mystery, but it's definitely looking more and more likely like this is some kind of a never before seen event such as a tidal disruption of a separate star swallowed by its own partner. But once we get more information, or once there is some additional updates about this, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous similar videos on white dwarfs and unusual planets in some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.